system is called the education system. It took a little break to do something called hiking the Appalachian Trail. You know, that. Um, small little trail, but I think it's somewhere near here. Um, in 2007, he earned his master's degree from App State up in Boone, and since then he has been a full-time instructor at Catawba Valley Community College with some of his colleagues that are here now. Recently, Luke has implemented a program called Got Some Seeds of Math Enrichment, where members from the surrounding communities give lectures on mathematical topics like personal finance, election theory, and meteorology. He also exposes CVCC students to some through Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as a way to further promote and advertise math. Finally, Luke enjoys keeping current with the latest technologies, especially those related to math education. He loves spending time outdoors. He stays busy with his two children, a year and a half and five years old, and he would be wrong to me if I did not say, go Mets. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Luke Walsh. There is plenty of room up front, uh, but if, if you like it back there, um, I would uh, cordially, cordially invite if you want to stay back there. That's perfectly That's fine. But yeah, talking about the calculators, all right. So I'm going to call this "Let's Climb the Mount Calc." All right. So there's this ultimate calculator that we're all uh, reaching for. All right. And so I think it's we're right now we're at a cusp where we can really put some strong input of what we want this calculator to look like. So that's pretty much what we're going to um, focus on today. Um, I have a couple of calculators. I suppose a lot of people use, what, like the TI-83 as their main one. I still had my very first. <laughs> the data man. Number guesser, wipe out, force out, electro flash. It just looks fun. Texas Instruments down there at the bottom. Who knew, like, what is this? <clears throat> like, it would be like years later that they're pretty much exactly the same, and that's kind of sad. All right. One calculator that I, I do love right now, does anybody use the TI-30X Pro? I think it's totally awesome. It's way better than, I think, the 33. It does integrals, it does derivatives, it keeps things in square root form. So if you put in like the square root of eight, it puts two square root two. They can see that. If you put in um, the sine of pi over six or pi over three, like it will put in like root three over two for the students. And doesn't have it in like the one point uh, radiant form. You can do, um, it solves the systems of equations. It does, um, you can do logs at different bases. You can do log base eight of two. All right, so that's nice. Um, you can do um, base two if you're doing um, binary or if you do hexadecimal. You can switch back and forth to fractions and decimals. And it's all, oh, oh, wait, one more thing. It does regression as well. It does everything that the graphing calculator should do except for graph, but that's fine. We have many other tools for graphing. And it's just $23. So a student can start at developmental math with this right, and just move all the way forward and never have to buy another calculator. That would be pretty nice, I think. Um, so I would really urge you to buy this at Staples or whatever. It's out there everywhere. It's very free. Or if you want to check it out later, it'll be here on the table where the things check out. All right, so we're going to be uh, climbing our mountain path. So let's look at some uh, things we have here. Right, so when we're climbing things, right, so we, what do we need? We definitely need a team to get us there to be able to travel all the way up to the top. We definitely need some resources. And now, right now, a lot of technology is in the cloud. So that's why I have that up there in the cloud. A lot of stuff is online. It's free and it's easy to use. So it's just kind of up there, ready for us to use. Right? We have some basic questions, though, that we're asking about on the side cloud there. I don't know what is a side cloud. I guess it's a cloud to the side. <laughs> all right. But then, you know, as we are climbing here, we definitely have some risks that we have to be worried about. All right. So, you know, we don't want to fall off the cliff, but we definitely want to reach the point where we can say, hey, we're, uh, we are getting our calc on. All right. 
So we want to get to here, at that peak, at that vertex. Oh, nice, I can use uh, mathematical language here. All right, so I'm going to be looking at the technology. We got the team count, the things that we'll be looking at. We got those risks that we definitely need to be aware of. Um, so our very first thing, let's look at to see who said this and uh, when. All right. So here's uh, just a simple little quote. It says, uh, books will soon be obsolete in the schools. Our school system will be completely changed in 10 years. All right, so this is Thomas Edison in 1913. And I think what his idea was, you know, he's just kind of making this picture TV thing. Right? But I think it's just how this has always been, right? This new thing comes up to the market, and we just think it's just ultimately just going to transform education. I mean, he's predicting, like, within 10 years, like, we're just going to go from never, ever seeing a TV to then, like, all of a sudden, just be using it in the classrooms. I, but maybe that's what he needed to do, right? Maybe he was uh, just really kind of pushing it a little bit further. But I think we can do the same thing with these graphing calculators. Um, there was two people, Watts and Dama, um, posed a challenge to teachers like in 1996, right when the graphing calculators were about to come on the market. I was graduating high school in Indiana, a farm rural school. A farm rural? I think that's redundant. A rural school, Amish around there and stuff. And I never had uh, graphing calculators. Um, but, you know, they posed these in 1996 of like saying, well, the research is there. Um, you really don't have to use the pen and the paper anymore, right? We have these calculators, we can do these algebra systems, and we definitely need to be doing that. But it's 16 years later, and it's still the exact same question of can the graphing calculators do this? or or is there going to be new stuff, the tablets? Is this going to help us to uh, move forward? So they posed this question in 1996, but I think we can still pose a question right now. Uh, you know, what are we going to be doing next? Um, or what is the graphic calculator not um, doing? So one thing you have to look at is, well, what level of technology are, are you, do you feel like you're on? So in this one research article, they suggested there's six different levels. Right? So I'm going to go through um, six different levels here. You can just kind of figure out what level you think that you're on. And I guess also just kind of think about also like the, the students a little bit. Because we have to be very much aware of what technology level they are. It, it does really no difference if I just only worry about my technology level and I just ignore them. Right? So as you're looking at these six levels, and it might be different for different classes, you know. Um, with the developmental, you might have some uh, adult learners. Is that the proper term? Is it the PC term? Yes. All right. So that might not be familiar with technology, I suppose. But you know, you still get these 18-year-olds who you, we just assume they're just going to be great with technology, and they're terrible with it. Um, so as you kind of look at these, think about your students as well. So we have step one is just awareness. I'm aware that technology exists. It's out there. It's in the ether. It, it does exist. But I've not used it. Perhaps I'm even avoiding it. I think that could be true sometimes. Right? Uh, I don't really have enough time in my day to just go do this other thing that just came out. Right? Um, I'm anxious about the prospect of using computers. Right? Um, and maybe just replace technology. Sometimes that's how students think. I'm aware that mathematics exists, but I've not used it. And perhaps I'm avoiding it. <laughs> right? I'm anxious about using uh, mathematics, all right? So I think we can definitely relate to mathematics and technology at the same time. Okay? So that's number one. Uh, number two is learning. I'm currently trying to learn the basics. I'm sometimes frustrated using computers. I lack confidence when using computers. You know, all of a sudden you just press the wrong button, right? And we can even feel this way with my math lab, web assign. You know, it's like, I just learned all my, uh, my math lab. Now I have to go to web assign. It's like, oh, geez. I just finally got this, right? So we can kind of always go back to the same cycle, right? But that's OK. Uh, I think the great thing about being a teacher is that you are humble. And you just say, well, I don't really understand it right now. But I can try. And I think that's what we ask our students. I know you don't understand math right now. But uh, you can try, and we'll just kind of move forward. So I lack the confidence. 
uh, understanding. I'm beginning to understand the process of you using technology and I think a uh, specific task in which it might be useful. So now you might be thinking, oh well, hmm, maybe like a nice quadratic uh, modeling or you got those uh, different sensors. And maybe you, you go to these conferences and you kind of see what they're doing. But then they make it look so easy, right? You understand what they're doing, but you wish you could do it as well. Uh, familiarity. Uh, I'm gaining the sense of confidence in using the computer for a specific task. I'm starting to feel comfortable using a computer. Uh, number five, adaption. I think I'm about uh, the computer as a tool to help me and no longer concerned about it as a technology. I can use it in many applications and instructional aid. I think that would be a nice thing that we're trying to get to. Just try to adapt it into our courses. And then I guess we have your other one here at the cornerstone here. We have the creative applications. I can apply what I know about technology in the classroom and I'm able to use an instructional tool and integrate it into the curriculum. So those are just six different uh, levels there. Hmm, are they linear? What do you think? Are the six do you, do you think it's like a, or do you think it's just more like a, a circle and you can kind of maybe jump around? Or do you, do, you, do you think, can you go from one to three, but then from three to two? Or do you think they put these like in a linear fashion? It's logistic. It's logistic? Okay. Well, yeah, I think that's how we mostly learn, right? So as a zero to two-year-old, you have this big jump, but then you just kind of slowly keep learning from there. So it's logistic, I guess, which one? Yeah, that would be great as any good function. Just kind of jump off and then get back I guess it could be a step function. I guess we're just <laughs> continually stepping up. So now we are at our uh, technology, and now we see the levels that we are. <clears throat> so let's look at a uh, cartoon here. So first this guy says, you know, how is it that computers are millions of times faster and far cheaper, but graphing calculators remain completely stable. Like in 1996, how much was a TI-82? What's the first one, 82? 81. 81. 81. 81. Oh, way back. <laughs> nice. I mean, there's been the iPad 1 and 2 and 3 in the last three years, but uh, they've made it to 80, 81, 82, 83. Uh, but they're at 86 and then back. Yeah. <laughs> right, 86 in the back. So, uh, remain completely stable. So they have pretty much stayed about the $100 mark. Uh, they've never gone below the $100 mark. Um, have they ever? I, I guess I shouldn't say that. Did Walmart. You? <laughs> Walmart. So, on sale, on sale, but it's technically So it's, it's, it's expensive. I mean, especially when you can get a iPod, a touch iPod for $150. That connects them to the web, takes pictures, does a lot of things. It, it's, it's a strange thing to me. I don't know all the technology that goes into it. All right, so he says, I'm going to go to the economics department so they can explain this nonsense. It was expensive 20 years ago. It's expensive 10 years ago. It's expensive now, despite everything that's happened in the meantime. It's just this flat price. Uh, the demand has almost probably even gone up at the time. And the guy says, hmm, let's, that's interesting. Let me talk to some other economists. Economic. Soon, uh, in this paper, we propose that graphing calculators are the world's reserve currency. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the gold. All right, you have these, uh, these calculators that 200 years later, we'll still be able to trade like, hey, this is worth $100. All right, you just kind of propose it. Uh, so I just thought that's just kind of interesting uh, a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, of why they kind of stay the same. Even like the newer calculators, like it's the Casio, uh, the math pad? Class pad. Class pad. It has a little stylus on it. it and you have the, uh, the new color one. But they're still like $150 or so. And okay, they can connect to the internet if the teacher has that big connect base there. Uh, they have all those things. But it's still very expensive for us and the students. Uh, we need to have like an Occupy Math Street or something. 
So we can say, well, we are no longer putting up with this. You need to lower the price right? um, and figure out how to do it. Right? Or we're not going to buy them anymore. And you have to also make them better. I, why am I still looking at a black and gray screen that's pixelated? <laughs> why am I not using my fingers on the screen yet? Uh, they, they could probably answer that. Um, I probably should ask them that, but it's better not to know the answer, I think. Okay. Um, another thing is that we have to look at is if a student has a smart device, then is this going to make them dumb? Right? Um, there was this other one, um, this research that they asked all these teachers about the questions of graphing calculators, and they gave all the range of answers. Um, this one person said that graphing uh, calculators uh, means students are not using their brains to think and problem solve. The technology is doing all the thinking and solving for them. Right? It is just another piece of technology that is aiding in the dumbing down of teaching and learning. I mean, do we think, do we think that's true? I mean, is the technology just, is it dumbing down the curriculum? Only if we let it. Only, yeah. <coughs> I would agree with that. The pencil and paper can easily dumb them down. If you just keep having them do the same plug and chug equation over, right? the, um, the pencil and paper can be just as much as a dumb device as the calculator, as the iPad, or whatever device that you're using. It's, for, it's up to the instructor to really uplift the learning. <coughs> and have some deep understanding to whatever you're using. You can use a yardstick if you want to, and you can have some really great higher learning, or you can use it as a dumb device, maybe <laughs> to smack somebody. <laughs> maybe that's not uh, allowed too much anymore. But I, I, I think that's, uh, I, I, you know, people will say, well, you know, if they just keep using those calculators, they'll, they'll never learn the fractions. Well, I agree, it depends on how you're doing it. Um, so we just have to be aware of, if, it's not the technology or the pencil and paper, it's what are we really doing that's going to be dumbing down the student. Um, all right, so this is our mission, right? So I think it's up to us to really dream up the best calculator for our students. Right? We are at a time where the technology is really there and things are definitely changing. Right? Just like it was like in 1996, right? Pencil and paper, there was, I mean, the graphing calculators, the calculator was now to a size that you could manage. It could really do, you know, have these sines and cosines and all these functions on there. <coughs> so let's just think here for a moment. I'll put it up there as well. But maybe just kind of pair up with somebody. And we'll just kind of think of, like, our ultimate dream calculator. Right? I mean, the one that is the greatest dream ever. The greatest dream ever. I don't know, I don't have the greatest dream, but... Um, Think of maybe just pair up with somebody, uh, or two people, or three, however you pair up. <laughs> uh, you can try pair, or you can quad pair. Uh, but just, um, we'll take like a minute or so, and just maybe think of what are some things that we want for our dream calculator. Therefore, I think. One of my ultimate mathematicians I just love is Rene Descartes. I think he was just the man. I mean, those guys, all those guys in the 1600s, right? You got Rene Descartes, um, the Gauss was there. Um, I think I was just reading about how Gauss was revered so much that I think it was Napoleon who was just conquering everything. We'll say it's him. Somebody conquering. And, like, they, he purposely went around Gauss's village because he was like, that guy is an awesome mathematician. I want him to say that. And he, I mean, it was looked upon like that. Right? And you had Riemann, you had these guys that really took mathematics from the Dark Ages. Right? Too bad the Romans could not follow the Greeks, what they did. Uh, we, we might be way far ahead of where we are right now if the Romans just didn't want to just conquer. Um, they really took the ideas of the Greeks. But Rene Descartes, you know, he said, I think, therefore I am. And he took graphing to a whole new level. I don't know if it's true that he was staring at the wall or the ceiling looking at the fly or what he was doing when he thought about taking the mathematical into a graphing 
I mean, what a huge leap that is. I mean, once you can put it like, on a graph and start looking at things, uh, we're just doing like the distance formula. I mean, just how cool would that have been to be like that person to come up with a distance formula based on the Pythagorean theorem? Like, look at those two points. And now you can maybe catapult <laughs> your fiery uh, lava stuff over <laughs> the castle or something. It must have been amazing at that point. And I think it's still amazing right now. Look at those 3D graphics that can like move around. And I think that sensibility that they had of exploring and looking at the mathematics, we can really install that uh, with our students today. And so when he said, I think, therefore I am, you know, I want the, the students to think like, well, I think, well, let me just go explore. I know what idea what I'm doing, but maybe I'm going to go check it out. And then now I'm around here, well, I'm in my mathematical forest, so I'm going to start calculating um, a little bit. Right? And I don't want it to stop right there. I want them to interpret. I want them to really think about what was that little adventure they just had. Right? And therefore think. And, right? and once they're thinking, well, they're just right back in that cycle. And I just think that's what we really need to kind of have when we're dreaming up that ultimate calculator. That it's just not another thing that's just going to help them with their math or whatever. It's, it's really taking it to the next level. And I think with the apps, all those great things that you guys said, we need to share that with our vendors. Go to the Desmos uh, webpage. Um, they listen awesome. They listen awesome. Uh, they are great listeners. <laughs> I was just bringing up the point to them. I said, you know, I'm, I'm starting to wonder now about plagiarism. All those cool graphs up there. You know, if I tell my student to make a cool graph, how do I not know that they already just copied somebody's? Because all those equations are there. How they think about it? They send me a message right away. They're saying, yeah, we are developing these algorithms to see how close the equations are. So start talking with the people. You know, if you want a touch screen on the calculator, well then start sending your messages. Just as if you would send your message to your local senator or something that you want to change in your community. Well, we have this math community and we want it to change. All right, so start sending it out to them. And then so we are getting what we want. And so not TI coming to us and say, well, Come spend a week, and we will teach you how to use this. Oh, wow, you have to give me a week to teach me how to use that? That just seems uh, frustrating to me. I would love just to just kind of pick it up and just start using it, and it's just nice. Apple doesn't say, hey, um, I have these great iPads, and uh, come take a week with us, and we'll start telling you how to use them. For some reason, that's OK if Apple doesn't do it, but uh, we want. Um, TI and those people to come tell us. We want them to say, hey, uh, MathPad, uh, I'll give you free MathPad uh, if you start using it or something like that. Um, Hello? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, just, I, just, I do need to say something to, to them, I think. I mean, I think we did touch it on all, our, on all, all the things. And as we touched on it before, it, it's we have to remember that the, the pencil and paper is just as much as a dumbing device. And, and, like, and so is the, the technology. But if you're just going to treat the technology like it's paper, paper and pencil, not have them explore the concepts, instead of just trying to have them memorize these facts, I think that's what we really need to, to reach for. If you're just having the TI-83 just draw like 2x squared plus 8, that's just pencil and paper. Have them really explore what does the quadratic do? What are the linear terms that really come to that? And what's in front of it that really makes it open up and slide and do all these?